Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on asking questions, level two, testable questions. The icon for asking questions is a question mark. Um, and what we're going to learn to do is ask more investigative questions. Remember that all questions, however, should be tied to some natural phenomena. So that will guide the work that we're going to do. And so the first thing you always want to do is identify the phenomena that you're going to use to investigate. And so what we'll start is uh, just come up with some questions. We'll look at a phenomena. We'll develop some questions. The next thing we'll figure out is are these scientific or not? Are they testable or not? For the ones that are, then we'll come up with some investigative questions. Those are questions where you actually get to change something and then we'll make some predictions. And so after watching this video, you should be able to ask investigative questions and testable questions around things like these drinking birds or a bubble levitator. What I'm gonna do is show you how to ask some testable questions around a Newton's cradle. And then we'll ask some questions together around a device called a rattleback. So let me clean this up and we'll get started. Okay, so for the first phenomena, we're going to use something that a lot of you are probably familiar with, and that's called the... Okay, so that's called the Newton's Cradle. So the first thing you always want to do is either play with a device or watch a phenomena. And what you want to do is just come up with some, what are some interesting questions? What are you wondering about? So I'm going to list those right here. Okay, so the questions that I came up with, first one, did Newton really invent this cradle? How does the release height affect the motion? And what happens if more than one sphere is launched? So the next thing I want to do is go through and figure out, are these testable? Now, it has to be a scientific question. It has to be a question that we could actually test. So let me show you my thinking around that. So the first one, did Newton invent the cradle? What I said is that's not a scientific question. That's a historical question. So I could answer it, but it doesn't, it doesn't like classify as a scientific question. However, the other two are. Next thing I'm going to do is for those that are testable, what I'm going to do is write an investigative question. What's an investigative question? It's an investigative question is one where I can change something and we'll see how it affects something else. I can do something and we'll see how it affects something else. And so let me write down some possible investigative questions. Okay, so for the first one, I don't have an investigative question, but for the next one, what I'm asking is, how does the height of sphere one release? In other words, if I drop it real low or really high, how does that affect the time of motion? Will it go shorter? Will it go longer? And the next one, if you increase the number of release spheres, so from one to two to three, on the right side, what's going to happen on the left side? Now, the temptation is for me to just play with it and figure that out, but an important part of science, because you don't always get to play with a phenomena, is to make a prediction. So I'm going to write some predictions down. Okay, so my, I couldn't make a prediction on the first one. For the next one, I said, if you increase the height of sphere one, it's release, it will go longer. Or for the next one, if you increase the number of spheres moving on the right, what will happen? I think the number on the right will move, uh, it will be equal to the number that are moving on the left. And so this is going to be my prediction. And so what we've done is essentially gone through and just asked some initial questions, figured out which ones are scientific, and then we've come up with investigative questions, ones that we could actually test, and then some predictions of what we think might happen if we were actually to investigate those questions. So that's my thinking around testable investigative questions. What I'm going to do is clean this up, and then you'll have a chance to ask some questions of your own. 
Okay, now that you've learned how to ask some investigative questions with predictions, I've got a new phenomena for you. These are called rattlebacks. If you spin them like this in the counterclockwise direction, they'll keep spinning. Uh, if you try to spin them in the clockwise position, though, what they'll do is they'll rattle and then they'll start moving back. So that's why they're called rattlebacks. And if you just touch them, then they'll start moving in that counterclockwise position. And so what I'd love to have you do is just pause the video. I want you to identify the phenomena, just come up with some questions, figure out which ones are testable, investigative questions, and then predictions, and then unpause the video, come back, and we'll see how our questions compare. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I have to identify the phenomena. Next thing I want to do is just come up with some interesting questions. What are some questions that I've got about the rattlebacks? Okay, so the questions I came up with, why does it want to spin counterclockwise? Are the rattlebacks unequally weighted? And then is it a magnetic phenomena? So the next thing I want to do is just go through and figure out, are these testable or not? Let me show you my thinking. So the first one is a good question, but there's not really any variable that I could change. And also in science, we never talk about something wanting to spin. So I think these are good uh, scientific questions. So let me write some investigative questions. Remember, those are ones where I could change something and then we could see how it uh, affects the phenomena. Let me write those down. So the first one, are they unequally weighted? I thought you could add weights. Maybe you could put little bits of clay or Play-Doh on the surface and then see if that changes its motion. And then the next one, you could use a magnet. If I put the magnet on one side, is that going to change the behavior or the movement in one direction or the other? And then the last thing I have to do is make some predictions. I don't get to do it. I have to make some guesses. Okay, my prediction, I just feel like it's maybe unweighted. So if I were to add or unequally weighted, so if I added clay on one side, I think it might change the motion. And then they felt plastic to me. So I'm thinking the magnet will have no effect. Again, we're not gonna do the investigation. What we're really doing is just planning the investigation. And so through this video mini lesson, what you've learned is how to ask investigative questions. If you want some more practice, I put some slides below. You could look at these drinking birds and ask some investigative questions, or you could look at this bubble levitator, but those are asking questions, especially ones that are testable, and those are the most important ones in science. And I give you a little direction on how to investigate that, and I hope that's helpful.